What would make this an especially useful conversation for you today? Uh, for me, I already began writing my personal statement, but the biggest question that I have is the difference between a personal statement and a, a diversity essay. Uh, when I first started this, I wrote like a rough draft. I wrote probably about three different essays, and then I started looking online for different examples, and there's a ton of free information out there, and I started reading examples of things that other people wrote about and what how they've written things. And the biggest thing that I learned about the great essays, it seems that people wrote as if it were um, if it were a prize winning novel, and it seemed like it started in the middle of the book. It didn't seem like, okay, hi, let me introduce myself. I'm Isaac. This is the story that I'm gonna tell. Like it just jumps into the middle, there's some action, and then that's the hook. So once it grabs your attention, you're like, oh, what's going on here? And then they kind of explain and you gather the information and then they all tie it up. So I decided to go that route. And the essay that I first started out with, I use that more as a diversity statement now. And then the personal statement that I started with um, or that, that I changed over to, I decided to go with one story of um, how I was recently shot. And I ended up going to the hospital for that. And I was actually attending an unaccredited law school and I dropped out and now I'm looking to go into an accredited law school now that I know the difference between the two. And um, I learned a lot about for myself just from that experience, having to learn how to walk again. And I just kind of talked about that whole situation because um, I, I mean, I survived the Vegas shooting and then I wasn't at the concert. I was in Vegas though. And that was a whole different story. And then after a month later, I ended up getting shot, hanging out with my friends and one of my friends passed away. And that whole um, adversity that I had to overcome through, I think that's a great story to talk about. So the way I wrote the story, it's the, it starts off with me already being shot, but I don't talk about me being shot. I just talk about the things that I was doing. I was trying to drive myself to the hospital. And then, you know, in the middle of the story, I talk about how, um, you know, I was bleeding because I'd just been shot. So then once I caught your attention talking about there's blood and there's a phone call and all this, I, I bring it together by mentioning that I was shot. And then I wrap it up by saying, um, you know, a lot of, I know there's a ton of things that I won't know about that I'm going to have to overcome. There's a bunch of uh, adversity challenges that people face when they're in law school. And I don't know what those challenges will be, but at the end of the day, I learned how to teach myself how to walk again with the help of doctors going to physical therapy. And at the end of it all, it's like what's difficult for one person isn't difficult for another. But I know that it was extremely difficult for me to overcome the challenges that I face. I think that's going to make me a great law student because I don't know what difficulties I'm going to overcome, but I know that I could overcome any difficulty after learning that. Certainly, Isaac. Wow, that's an incredible story. And it sounds like you've been through a lot of incredibly difficult, harrowing experiences. And my condolences as well on the loss of your friend. Yeah, I think that you have gone through a lot of different things, and many of them could make for great personal statements or diversity statements. To circle back to your initial question about what is the difference between personal statement and diversity statement, there isn't necessarily a huge one except for perhaps the length. Personal statement may be slightly longer, of course. Okay. Now, if you have multiple topics and one tends more towards the theme of diversity, of course, you can place that one in the diversity bucket and the other one in the personal statement bucket. But I wouldn't really think of them as distinct essays because they're not going to be read in isolation. Rather, they are different component parts of a complete law school application. So if there, I would pick one area for each statement and go deeper on it. You're right that personal statements or diversity statements, or these are personal pieces of writing. And because you have such a limited space, you do need a hook. Some novels start with hooks as well, but this is not a resume. This is not a chronology from start to end. You do of course want to grab their attention with that hook and then perhaps take a little bit of time to zoom out and talk about the bigger picture. And of course, answer the question 
of why law school. Now you've mentioned several different things. You could pick any of them to make personal statement topics or diversity statement topics. What I would encourage you to do though is not try to explain everything in each statement. There will inevitably be some things that are left out of your application altogether. Some of them might be covered in the resume, but some might not be. And so when you were, you were describing the different experiences that you've had, I know you were just telling me your background, but I wouldn't want that to be how a statement read because then you run the risk of a, laun of a laundry list, simply listing everything that happened from start to finish. Some details will be left out. I think the, the, the idea of getting shot, that is of course a unique experience. And if you, you said that you, it was not in the statement, I might think about including that in some way because that does speak to the gravity of the situation that you underwent. How does that strike you? Oh yeah, no, I, I do mention it, but I mention it more in the middle of the, the probably the second paragraph or third paragraph somewhere along there. Um, and I, that's exactly where I was going with because my diversity statement just seems like it's a laundry list where my personal statement, it just seems like it's dead on right now. Um, I really haven't shown it to anybody. I had one person read through and then there was just some minor changes that they mentioned. So I made those uh, corrections. But other than that, it's more like the diversity statement right now seems to be where it's like not coherent. And my personal statement just seems to be on point. But yeah, there was a lot of details that I left out um, just because it's limited to two pages, double space. And when, when I wrote it, well, I, I mean, there's a few schools that will take three pages, but I, I feel like more, less is more in this situation. So I just try to keep it as concise as possible. So I think I, I'm really close to being there on the personal statement and then the diversity statement. That's where it's like, okay, what makes me diverse? I feel that there's like 20 different things that makes me unique. And it's like, how do I explain all of this in two pages without rambling on? And, I, and I'm not mentioning things that are on my resume because I don't feel like, okay, me working at a bank and then working over here and working over there, that that's really diversity. For me, it was more of my background, like being raised at a trailer park. Like a lot of people talk about growing up poor or whatever, but it's like, I don't hear about anyone coming from a trailer park. And growing up, the only person I thought I knew that grew up from a trailer park was Kid Rock. And then years later, come find out he had like this five acre estate. It's like, okay, that was all a hoax. Like that guy, never spent a day in a trailer, you know? So I, I think that makes me unique. And so I decided to put that. Right, so let's hold up right there for a second, Isaac. Yeah. So trailer park, you're the background in which you were raised. That yeah. right there, you, that, you said that there were several different things you were talking about in the diversity statement, but the one thing you mentioned to me now was the trailer park. So what yeah. if you spent the entire statement just focusing on that? Yeah, I think that, that would be great. It's just like, then I also want to talk about you know, the high school that I went to being underprivileged and, you know, there, there's just so many different things, but I, I think you're dead on uh, just sticking to one topic, kind of like how I did on the personal statement. That's probably going to be much more effective. And there are places in your resume, you can hint at other things if you want to. So if there are other activities that relate to diversity in some way, maybe you can work them in you're, or you can even have a, a section on hobbies, interests, activities, and you can make certain allusions there, depending on what you've done, that can hint at diversity as well. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I think that's dead on. Um, and then it was just like, I also wanted to talk about my family, but from what I've read online, it's all the advice is saying, just keep it more personal to me. Um, but I, I did want to mention that like, okay, my mom comes from Mexico, so she was a, an immigrant. So I'm basically a first generation American, but I think I could probably tie that in with the main focus being uh, growing up in a trailer park. You can, you can in one set, in one phrase, first generation. Mm -hmm. If you just say that, oh, yeah. that contains a lot of information and you can mention right. your mom in passing because that yeah. is, you're, you're growing up in the trailer park inevitably raises, you know, raises the topic of your background and your family. So there is space to mention them in passing, but as you said, the focus should be on you. Definitely, that sounds great. I, I think uh, that's a huge benefit just knowing that. Excellent. Excellent. So how many words is the diversity statement right now? Oh, uh, let's see. I have, or for the diversity statement, I'm not sure. Um, I should be able to I have it up here. Let me pull it up. Well, just ballpark. Is it 300 words, 500 words, 1,000? Uh, 
I would say uh, probably 700 words or so. It's two pages, double space. Okay. Uh, size 12 font, Times New Roman. Great. All right. So I would suggest doubling that and then okay. cutting it down again. Great. Yeah, that's like what I did with the- uh, jam-packed. Awesome. Yeah, with, with the personal statement, I started off with five pages and it was just a horrible mess. I cut it down to three. It seemed pretty solid. And then now it's down to two. And that took about two months to write the personal statement that way. So I still have time for the diversity statement. And that's why we're, we're getting down to the February 1st deadline for a lot of the schools in California. So that's why I figured I needed to help right now. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you've got a bit of a direction on which to go here. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you just keep revising, keep editing, print it out and make markings by hand if you can. That adds a certain, certain seriousness to it and makes it a little bit easier to make those edits sometimes. Oh, that's I, you might experiment with that. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's been great connecting with you, Isaac. Um, before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Well, the biggest insight was to keep it about myself. And I could also mention things in passing where it's going to be jam-packed with information. So I don't have to directly talk about it. I could talk about the information, different things about my diversity in passing and that the diversity statement shouldn't be a laundry list and it should be uh, just focused on myself mainly and all the other key components are just going to be tied in together just by um, the sentences I'm going to use and the, and the phrases that I put in there. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Please send it over when you're done and keep in touch. Let me know if I can help in any way as you move forward. All right. I appreciate your help, Steve. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.